Welcome back guys, 30 in 30 challenge continues. Uh, my name is Arkin, I'm doing videos on data recovery on this channel this month, 30 days, 30 videos, videos coming out every day, so tune in, subscribe. Oh, I really do appreciate all the support and um, uh, comments you guys been posting recently um, motivates me to do these um, more and more and more. So uh, today we will be working on a project that's probably going to be quite time consuming uh, to do entirely. Uh, but uh, we received three cards from same client that all had failed. I don't know if it's a, um, a faulty card reader that kept killing these cards or something. But uh, we got a fourth card here that is functional. This card is working and we can confirm it by plugging this in into the reader. And uh, this... Uh, We'll go, let's just say, Deep Spar USB Stabilizer. Plug it in. All right, so this card is functional. It mounts uh, in the environment. And if we were to run our studio, just give it a minute to load it uh, loads the transcend device is the brand of the adapter it says so right there it's right here and it's got a partition xfat we can explore it in hex view and we have it side by side you guys can see that this is actually the partition we're exploring we scroll you can see this represents data like when this stuff looks uh, when we've got like a bunch of different uh, elements in there, that's that empty space looks like this. All right, um, that's a functional device. If the card is functional. We can clone it with many different uh, tools that are available to us. If the card is not functional, that's a different story. So right now I have a PC3000 flash uh, right here. I'm gonna connect. Uh, the working card into the PC3000 flash card adapter, one of my favorite adapters, and plug this in here. Start new task. It's going to ask, use an adapter. We're going to say yes. Using the adapter, we will have to go and create a new task. I'm going to name it 7542, and I'm going to make a subfolder, call it uh, good card test. So in the device section, some of the videos I just posted recently explain these uh, options. SD card adapter is what we're going to choose and go make that a copy uh, into an image file. This tool doesn't know how big our device is, but we know by the label it's 64 gigs. So we're going to say 64 gigs. And uh, we are able to have control uh, through SD card control menu and parameter section we can select the speed uh, timeout power mode uh, how many how what, what frequency we want to use what protocol we want to use just gonna leave it all on default because we know this card is functional when we fire it up on default settings the card starts up and it gets initialized through the tool the log we see here based on this log we can tell that the card has no issues and if we go into uh, let's say map we can begin cloning process and we'll see green blocks accumulate. Green blocks, the sign of successfully read sector, no issues there. If we go into uh, Explorer, we will be able to navigate the card structure and proceed with um, copying the data out. We don't need to do that on this specific card because it is functional, but we do need to do the same on cards that came in that are damaged. First, I'm gonna depower this card or just clear legend here okay we're going to start start blank so now all of the those sectors that we've read into our image file they're now gone uh, we now can take this card out all right and i'm going to swap it out for a failed card it's got uh, marking number two so on one of the three cards is here and we're going to power this up so now we switch back go back into the main screen log and we're gonna fire up failed card in the exact same way but we get this message uh, card status 
uh, and the card is locked. If we play scanning, we get these messages coming up and we don't see the green blocks accumulate. It's not going to go forward, it's going to keep throwing these errors. So let's stop this here and we're going to switch to this tool. It's called Easy JTAG Plus. Easy JTAG Plus I'm going to use with this adapter. It's a custom adapter uh, that allows uh, to work with memory cards using uh, technological mode. And so it's not an end protocol access. It's still through the interface, but it's not SD protocol. It's ISP protocol. Actually, let's just plug in the uh, the tester. The tester, I, I've put this white label on it, so I'm not going to confuse them. Up here, we can go and uh, select check MMC UFS. And uh, we can see that it's able to access it. And it's starting to read. Plug in the failed one. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, check MMC first. But it says MMC password locked. We still have um, our DeepSpire USB stabilizer tool that we wanted to test. So the USB stabilizer tool we already tested with a good card. Now let's plug in the failed one and see what that does. Plug back here, power up, go to the log. And we do also see the device mounting. So because it's already mounted and it runs through the DeepSpire, I'm going to go into our studio. See that the unit is reading some stuff. It finds um, a transcend with 57.95 gigs space. But if we go and explore it, and this is what we see. We see untranslated data. All sectors show exact same values. And uh, that's where we can see that the problem is pretty evident. If the translator is not loading, if the firmware is not loading, we may still be able to get access uh, partially to the NANDs properties to get the space and specs. But if the translator crashed, the data doesn't get translated just like the EMMC. It's one piece, but it has um, multiple components on the inside. On the outside, it's one piece, but everything is embedded inside. And where it, it, what's embedded on the inside is a NAND storage where the data is kept and the controller that runs that memory. Right now, through interface, all of these three tools that we went over with, uh, they communicate uh, with the device using this interface, different protocols, but this interface and that interface talks to the controller. So the controller has to communicate later on with the NAND and get some information from it and update the tool. But if that information isn't coming out completely and intact how it's supposed to be, we get either no access or partial access. So our job here is to access the device's NAND and the NAND can be accessed through the NAND protocol. This is the first time I see um, a pinout like this. I do have a schematic for it. One of the vendors does have it in the database so no uh, pinout development in this case is needed. But we're going to mount it up to a NAND breakout and we're going to use our traditional NAND recovery tools to communicate with the storage directly. If we establish connection there, and if we discover that there is no LDPC algorithm or uh, some sort of compounded complex XOR uh, that is dynamic, then we'll be able to um, apply all of the data conversion elements to the card and see the data in actual previewable form. Uh, that's the job today, guys.
The wiring is done for the most part and uh, time to test this thing out so I showed this in every video almost uh, that's a multi-adapter 
kind of system. So this piece goes into a um, quick release plate that gets connected to the reader and USB cable. Read ID. If our wiring is good, we should get an ID here. And we do. So Toshiba ID starts with 98. We have a config for it in the database. So this is it guys, uh, the, the unit is wired up, uh, we're ready to read. Reading and assembly will follow in the uh, um, next part. Um, if we can solve one card, we can probably solve all three. So reading that chip out yesterday uh, did produce uh, some good news and some bad news. Good news is that uh, we can see that the uh, XOR for the user data is static, but we also have XOR in the service area. Service area is where uh, the information about block numbers would have been kept and without it we can't build uh, our block sequence to get the content out. So luckily for us customer had supplied a few working cards as well that they are the same. Uh, they will need to be wired up and using an adapter that has uh, NAND protocol on it and SD protocol on it makes it very useful uh, for um, pattern recording. We can record the pattern using the SD protocol of the adapter and then read the NAND using the NAND protocol on that same adapter without having to switch devices. And uh, what that will lead us to is that by writing a pattern into, um, into a fresh working device, we can then extract XOR uh, and find out if there is any, um, if there is any arrangement of how uh, these blocks line up uh, using something that we can have manipulation over. The data that's been recorded to the um, uh, original patient card uh, has completely random data written to it. There is no way to predict what the next step should be. But uh, if we record a pattern, we know what we're expecting to see. Minus that will give us something that we're missing. So. Uh, hopefully that makes sense guys, but I will make a separate video on the outcome of it. I don't know whether we're going to uh, end it up with a good node or a bad node. It's too early to tell. The case is very challenging, but uh, regardless of the outcome, I'll post the results as a separate episode once the development is done. You're going gonna to see the, the mix that's going to be developed. It looks crazy already, so <laughs> there's a lot of work went into it, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to wrap it up within the next couple of days but as soon as it's ready it will be posted so uh, as soon as I have that video live guys check keep if, if you saw it not today but let's say a few days from now check the link in the description there's gonna be a link to part two or I'll put it in the card up here uh, that's it for now guys thank you very much for joining me on this 30 and 30 challenge I post daily videos every day for 30 days if you guys are into this kind of stuff subscribe if you haven't already and uh, don't forget to hit like and post some comments. Uh, I really appreciate it and I'll see you all in the next episode.